comments 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 email 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 and yes messages also since last two months we have received number of messages from the cadets those who are going to appear for their class 4 orals and because of that we are coming up with our brand new season of class 4 oral questions the questions which has been asked to cadets during their class 4 interviews so yes we have gathered all the questions for you and now i will be discussing each and every question with you in a very detailed manner so without wasting the time let's start the video i will take you to my computer screen once again guys welcome to our brand new season of mu class for oral questions so there is always a lot to know and a lot to discuss but before going to the actual questions if you are new to our channel then please subscribe our channel and press this bell icon so that you will be notified when we release our video so in brief i will be discussing with you what is the syllabus for class 4 oral some of you might not be knowing what is the syllabus so there are actual four orals which are conducted by mmds in which we have different functions like function 3 in which we have safety and shift construction the question will be asked from safety and shift construction it is actually sub part of a controlling operations of ships and care for persons on board at operational level and function b in which the question asks from engineering knowledge general and motor it is a sub part of marine engineering at operational level and function 5 is related to marine electrical technology so the question will be asked from marine electrical technology and it is a sub part of electrical electronics and control engineering at operational level and the function 6 is marine engineering maintenance and repairs at operational level so guys let's move to our first question of this brand new season so guys today i will be discussing with you function 3 which is a safety and ship construction so let's start our first question the first question is why tankers have less freeboard in comparison with container ship roro vessel or any other type of ship so do not try to directly jump on the conclusion in every question we have some systematic points and we have to describe all the points you cannot directly jump to the conclusion and give the answer in a single line so let's move to the answer because they have much smaller deck openings in a main deck it's a self understood point no need to explain they have a greater subdivision by the additional longitudinal transverse bulkhead you can see the structure the ship construction diagram of the tanker in which you can see that the tanker ship have additional longitudinal and transverse bulkhead so because of this the freeboard is generally less and the third point is their grain oil has a greater buoyancy than grain cargoes the cargo oil has a greater buoyancy than grain cargo so that's why this self understood point the point number fourth is they have more pumps to quickly control ingress of water after bilging incident actually this point is not very important but yes you you can always add this point while answering so guys the point number five says that the cargo oil has a less permeability of about five percent while grain cargo has a permeability of 60 to 65 percent so because of this the lower permeability will instantly allow less ingress of water following a bilging and incident suppose if a bilge accident can take place then the rate at which the water enters into the ship will be less because of the cargo oil permeability is less so you have to understand the point number four and five there is a link between both the points so guys move, moving to the next point the next point says that oil tanker has a greater gm value gm values means the distance between the meta center and the center of gravity is and if this distance is more what will happen the stability of the ship will be more okay so the next question question number two is what is margin line in this type of question we have a particular definition you just have to mug up the definition and just repeat the definition in front of survey you cannot make your own definition just have to give simple definition it states that it is the imaginary line which is drawn 75 mm below the uppermost continuous stack it denotes the limit up to which can be flooded loaded without sinking so when you see the load line diagram you can see the margin line very easy so guys moving to the next question so guys the next question is what is block coefficient so if we say that block coefficient of one ship is 0.9 and the other ship is 0.95 then what does it 
mean? So let's first read the definition of block coefficient. The block coefficient states that it is the ratio of volume of displacement to the product of length, breadth, and trot. Trot means draft. Okay. So in a mathematical form, you can write this CP is equals to volume of displacement divided by length, breadth into draft. Okay. So suppose when the block coefficient of one ship is more then it means that it means what does it mean it means that volume of displacement of that particular ship is more so what this value is indicating suppose if the ship b has a block coefficient of 0.95 then the volume of displacement of this ship will be more okay so the question number four is what is free surface effect and what will happen if free surface effect is more if what is free surface effect you have to simply give the definition as per the textbook because most of the surveyors cannot read your or cannot listen your man-made definitions so you cannot make your own definitions you have to give the definitions which was given in book so free surface effect states that when a tank of a liquid is a partially filled and the mass of a liquid is moved so this movement affects the metacentric height. Suppose if the tank is not fully filled, if it is a partially filled, though, so when the ship sails into a sea, then because of the rolling and pitching, the liquid inside the tanks starts moving. So this, because of this, the metacentric height changes because it affects the metacentric height. So this is called as the free surface effect and suppose if the free surface effect is more than what will happen simple the ship may have chance to capsize your ship may capsize because as soon as the gm values the distance between meta center and the center of gravity increases then what will happen the chances of ship to get capsized will increase so let's move to our next question so the question number five is what is purpose of collision bulkhead and where it is located very easy question this is again the purpose is to avoid flooding of ship in case of damage to the boat any forward part of the ship gets damage due to collision or any other reason so its purpose is to avoid the flooding of the entire ship and where it is located you cannot directly say that where it is lo located it is located in the forward part of ship yes you can say while you are studying in our while you are studying in your college but see you are giving this oral examination in front of surveyor so you have to answer all the question as per the solas as per the marpool so what does solas says as per solas chapter 2 regulation 2.1 the collision bulkhead must be located not less than 0.05 l where l stands for the total length of the ship from forward to aft or 10 meters whichever is lesser from the forward perpendicular and not more than 0 0.08 length or 0 0.05 L plus 3 meter. You have to understand these parameters, whichever is greater. The regulation requires that the bulkhead is watertight from the bottom of the ship to the bulkhead deck. So it runs from the bottom of the ship to bulkhead deck. So let's moving to our next question. So next question is regulation 15b of annex marpole 73 78 is concerned with so very simple question again the regulation 15b of marpole annex 1 so the regulation 15b is concerned with the discharges of oil or oily mixture in a spatial areas so you have to remember this that the discharge of oil or oily mixture in spatial areas is a regulation from Marpole Annex 173-78 of Regulation 15P. So, guys, the next question is which operations to be recorded in Oil Record Book Part 2? So, where once again, very easy question. This is Oil Record Book Part 2. So, the answer is loading of oil cargo, very simple, internal transfer of cargo during voyage. If you transfer the oil from one tank to another tank, so this entry you have to also make in oil record. 
book part 2 and unloading of cargo crude oil washing blasting of cargo tanks actually blasting of cargo tanks is carried out in those ships where the cbt and spps are exist the clean ballast tanks and segregated ballast tank nowadays it has been opted by cs if your ship does have this function then also you have to maintain the record of the same and the cleaning of cargo tanks obvious thing and the discharge of dirty ballast okay this is very easy question so the next question is what should be the internal external diameter of and mass of life buoy as per the solas very important question very important question in this question you have to remember the parameter which has been given by the solas you cannot manipulate the answer you cannot say uh, sir it between 400 to 500 mm no 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 you have to give the exact parameter which has been described in the books by the solas so the answer of this question is life buoy have an outer diameter of not more than 800 mm and an inner diameter not less than 400 mm these parameter you have to have mug up those parameters and the second point is life buoy have a mass of not less than 2.5 kg as per the solas yes guys so question number 9 is what are different life buoy markings so the answer for this question is the number of persons for which the life buoy is approved shall be clearly marked on it in a clear permanent character Yes. Point number second states that the name and port of registry of the ship to which the lifeboat belongs shall be marked on each side of the lifeboat's bow in a block capital of the Roman alphabet. So these two points are clear. Then the point. So the next point is means of identifying the ship to which the lifeboat belongs means you have to. you have to write the ship's name on the lifeboat itself so it can be identified from outside that this lifeboat belongs to this particular ship and the number of lifeboats shall be marked in such a way that they are visible from above suppose your ship have, has two lifeboats then on each lifeboat it has to be mentioned that it is lifeboat number 1 and it is lifeboat number 2 okay so moving to the next question so guys the next question is question number 10 what are solas regulation for emergency generator on ship very basic and very important question so let's read this answer all passenger and cargo vessels shall be provided with emergency source of electrical power for essential service under the emergency committee self understood point emergency generator and emergency switchboard of the ship should be located above the uppermost continuous stack away from the machinery space and behind the collision marker very So the next point is the main switchboard of the ship should not interface with supply control and distribution of emergency power. So you might be knowing that there is an interlock provided between the main switchboard and emergency switchboard. So both cannot be interfere with the supply control and the distribution. Point number four states that emergency source of power should be capable of operating with a list of up to twenty two. Point five degree and trim of up to ten degree, which you have to mug up. You cannot make these answers. You cannot say, sir, it is the above. It may be twenty two or it may be twenty five. You have to just mug up this answer. Point now, next point is the generator should have independent fuel supply having a flash point not less than forty three degree Celsius. Very simple. Next point is emergency generator should be capable of giving power for the period of 18 hours for the cargo ship and 36 hours for the passenger ship. You have to remember and distinguish between the cargo and the passenger ship. Particularly if the surveyor has not mentioned you earlier that uh, you have to tell the solas regulation for which ship. Emergency generator should be start at zero degree Celsius and if the temperature falls below, then there should be a heating arrangement. So the next point is emergency generator should come on load automatically within 45 seconds after the failure of main power supply. This is 45 seconds. You have to remember this. Okay. The next point is if the generator fails to come on load, the indication should be given in ECI. Suppose if the generator fails to come on load, then there should be an indication in the engine control room, which indicates that yes, the emergency generator fails to come on load within the 45 seconds of the main power supply. 
so the next part is emergency generator should have two different starting arrangement so the one might be battery start and the second might be hydraulic we have a hydraulic motor for this next point is primary may be the battery should fully charge all the time and capable of providing three consecutive start the battery should be capable to provide three consecutive start secondary may be pneumatic or hydraulic as i have said it may be pneumatic or it may be hydraulic capable of providing three consecutive starts within 30 minutes and the first start within 12 minutes self understood okay guys thank you for watching the marine whales and if you are new to our channel please subscribe our channel so that you will be notified when we release our second part of the function 3 ship construction and safety so that you will be notified in advance when we release our video okay guys bye